Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're very excited to have you all here. This is a webinar series where we are introducing and explaining some of the interesting open source projects that stem from VMware. And the topic of today is Project Harbor. So our speaker today is Harbor product lead James Sabala, and he knows the projects thoroughly inside and out. So if you have any questions regarding the project throughout the webinar, please make sure to add them to the Q&A box, and we will answer them throughout the presentation. With that, I'm going to hand it over to James. Thanks, Jonas. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here. Uh, happy to share uh, some thoughts on Harbor and go through this presentation. As Jonas said, uh, please feel free to, to send questions, and we'll do our best to answer them uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, so before we get uh, too deep into this, I, I was hoping that I could kind of get an understanding for the level of familiarity with the cloud native ecosystem and or containers from the audience. Uh, so if you could just take maybe 30 seconds or so, click one of these boxes, uh, just so that I can tailor the presentation as I move forward, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, fantastic. A few more seconds here. All righty, great, thanks. Um, looks like there's a few folks who are uh, kind of getting their feet wet in the, the cloud native ecosystem. So I'll spend a little bit of time here uh, as I begin talking about Project Harbor uh, about containers, just, just kind of giving a super high level overview. Uh, if you are an expert in, in, in containers, please go uh, brew yourself a nice latte and I'll, I'll be, be done in just a few minutes here. But um, uh, I do want to make sure everybody is, is comfortable with the topic. Uh, so again, my name is James, uh, product lead here uh, for Harbor. I work on all the open source projects that the cloud native team inside of VMware is, uh, is contributing to and, and working on a uh, pretty exciting area. Containers, obviously, there's a lot of hype around it. Uh, Harbor is, is this project that's been around for a few years and it's gaining quite a bit of momentum and, and, and mind share. So I wanted to sort of spread the word here a little bit and talk about uh, why we built it and, and what it is. Uh, so at its core, Harbor is a, a, a trusted cloud native registry, right? And this means that we kind of focus on a couple of different core pillars when, when we were building and creating this project and continue to to evolve it. Uh, number one, we store container images, obviously. It's very similar to Docker Hub, where you can uh, you know, build a container using Docker on your laptop and throw it up uh, to, um, uh, to their service. Uh, the same thing you can do with Harbor. You can, you can store container images. Uh, and, and sort of the security pillars come around uh, signing and scanning content. And we'll double click on both of those topics uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, but we really focus on, on having a trusted slash secure cloud native registry. And that's, that's what Harbor is all about at its core. So quick uh, talk about the agenda. We'll, we'll do Container 101 for, for the folks that um, are kind of getting their feet wet. I'll talk about Harbor uh, and go into detail and, and 3, 4, and 5, uh, and a little bit of 6. 6 is a very high-level topic that I don't dive too much into, but these are all sort of subtopics about what Harbor, Harbor is all about. I'm also going to give a, a case study discussion. So I'll talk about Kai Cloud, which is a Chinese company that leverages Harbor as, as really a core pillar uh, of its offering. I'll discuss a roadmap, which uh, perhaps will take some of you aback simply because roadmaps are generally not publicly discussed at VMware, but this is a completely 100% uh, transparent open source project, so I'm free to sort of share this with the world. Uh, and finally, I'll give a live demo, which I'm sure is, is what most of you are, are trying to see. I'm a big fan of live demos, hoping that the wind is blowing in my direction today and everything goes smoothly. So let's do a quick uh, containers 101 here. Uh, yeah, everybody sort of describes containers in a different way. If you ask 12 people what a container is, you'll probably get you know, six or eight different answers. Uh, if you put on a developer hat, you, you can kind of break this down and really understand what a container is all about, uh, why we use containers, why they're so popular. Right? So let's say you're writing a Python application. Uh, as you do so, you need, I don't know, a dozen different libraries. You bang this out on your computer, on your laptop, everything's working great. And now you want to go and run it on, on, I don't know, a dozen different servers. The issue here is that you need to go and touch every single server and make sure that the libraries that are uh, being leveraged by your application exist on those servers, are installed, is running the right version, and so on and so forth. Right, and so a container, the way 
way that I define it, at least coming from a developer background, is that it's a sort of a hermetically sealed tarball that has everything that you need to be able to run your application identically on your laptop and on a server halfway across the world. Okay, so that's really what it is. It's just a tarball. Literally, it's a tarball that has everything that you need to run a container identically wherever you run it. Right? So in this particular picture, you know, we're looking at sort of the Docker model here. Uh, there are a couple of other container runtimes, but Docker being the most popular one. Images at the top is, is what you have when you uh, sort of save a container that's been running and you've been working on. All right? And the image you can take and you can throw it on registry like Harbor or Docker Hub. You can export it into a tarball. Again, save it, load it. Uh, you can tag these images, as I'll show you in the live demo. And then you can run them so that they're actually containers, uh, very similar to the VM model. If you're familiar with VMware, I'm sure you are. So as we go to the next slide here, you know, we, we kind of look at where Harbor sits in all of this, right? Let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster, or I don't know, maybe it's Nomad, or you're just kind of doing this uh, uh, by hand without any orchestration systems because you have a relatively uh, small environment. The challenge here is you don't want to be taking tarballs and sending them all around, right? So Harbor sits in the middle here at the top box, in the registry box. And once you have an image that you feel comfortable with and you've tagged it, maybe it's pre-prod or prod or staging or whatever it may be, you would send it to the registry. And on the other side, on the server or the servers, you would go and do a Docker pull and grab that container uh, from the registry. So that's container 101. That's sort of the high level. That's sort of all you need to know to kind of dive into Harbor. Uh, it's a super deep field. Once you start, once you start diving in, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, of a rabbit hole. Uh, but, but it's a lot of fun. And, and this, is, this is really where uh, uh, concepts like Kubernetes and so on start to start to unfold. So I encourage you, for those of you who, who uh, voted as being sort of new in this area, uh, take a look. It's, it's an interesting topic. So introduction to Harbor. <clears throat> Again, open source, um, something we're very proud of. I'll, I'll go through a timeline here in the next slide, but everything we do is open. Right? Our, our roadmap is open. The epics uh, that we use uh, to track features that are coming down the pipe are open. Our developers are on GitHub. We answer issues on there. Uh, it's it's a it's a pretty pretty nice uh, um, uh, process and sort of refreshing after working with uh, uh, you know sort sort of closed source products where you really don't have any ideas of of what may be coming down the pipe with with Harbor it's it's very open and we take community feedback uh, pretty seriously. It's also integrated into several of our core products: vSphere integrated containers, also known as Vic, uh, and PKS, which is our on-prem uh, Kubernetes offering. Uh, so it's a project that, even though it's open source and out there, we as a company use and leverage quite a bit. So we put we put a lot of love and, and care into the project, and, and I think it shows. In terms of timeline, uh, Harper started back in 2014 as sort of an internal side project. And the use case was very simple, right? We Containers were kind of uh, gaining some serious momentum at this point. Uh, we had some developers that needed to store images. Um, and there was really no good way to do that. I mean, there was the open source uh, uh, Docker um, uh, registry that was available, and, and that is still what is the core of our product, sort of the heart of Harbor, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but there was no RBAC, there was no uh, audit logging, all the, the goodies, the bells, and the whistles were missing. So in 2014, a gentleman by the name of, of Henry Zhang, who's the chief architect and, and the, the founder of Harbor, uh, started banging on this project on the side. And uh, two years later, we open sourced it, right, after, after using it for a while and, and really solving the, the use case that we had internally. And once we open sourced it, you know, Henry's a, a really great evangelist. He went around and started talking about Harbor with, with lots and lots of organizations and companies out in, in the uh, Asia Pacific region and it's gained quite a bit of momentum. Uh, we have a lot of external contributors, a lot of stars in the project, and um, you know, a lot of open issues too, which happens to all, uh, all, all popular open source projects. Uh, but this kind of shows how, how over the last four years or so the project has evolved. In terms of future integrations, I mean, Harbor is a project that lives in this cloud native ecosystem. So there's, you know, obviously we're looking at how to integrate this tightly with Kubernetes using the open service broker API so that uh, developers can do a uh, sort of a, a self-administration or, or creating projects on their own without having to pay an, an administrator. Uh, Prometheus is something we're looking to integrate with uh, and so on. So as, as many uh, cloud native projects that exist out there in the ecosystem, we're sort of picking which ones make sense, which ones are popular and have a lot of momentum uh, and determining how to integrate with those as well. Key features, again, we're going back to sort of the pillars about having a trusted container registry. Um, I'll kind of talk about this high level. I don't want to read the slide out to, to all of you. Uh, it's multi-tenanted, right? So that means that there are projects, users live inside of projects, 
users can block in multiple projects. Um, you can obviously have multiple projects, and this will all make sense when I, I show you the UI here in, in the demo section. So it's a pretty simple concept. It's very powerful, though. Uh, we sign content. We validate content using Notary. I'll talk about that in a few slides. Uh, we do vulnerability analysis. I would say this is either our first or second most popular feature. Uh, this allows a developer who creates an image today uh, and feels comfortable that there are no vulnerabilities in the, in the image uh, uh, today uh, to feel confident that in a week from now, if a new vulnerability is found, he or she will be made aware of it. Um, RBAC, so role-based access control, not everybody needs full access to everything, sort of a, a basic security construct, and, and we obviously um, uh, ascribe to that. Uh, and image replication, I would say, is probably, um, again, either our first or second most popular feature. Um, and it allows you to do some really interesting and clever things with, uh, with containers, and I'll talk about that as well in just a few slides here. So those are, those are sort of the key pillars that, that, we've, uh, that we've been focusing on here in the last uh, year or two. So real quick, uh, for the techies on the call, I'll talk about the architecture. Um, Harbor is, is, a, is a couple of different projects that we've sort of packaged together. We, we've tested them. They're tightly integrated. Um, and it really appears as, as sort of a one, uh, one product or one platform, even though under the hood there's a couple of different things going on here. So the first thing to look at here is, is uh, the API routing layer. That's Nginx. Right? It's doing a reverse proxy. Pretty straightforward. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see the trusted content. This is Notary, another cloud-native computing foundation project. On the left-hand side, you'll see the image registry, right, with a little clam uh, logo. And that is the, sort of the heart of, of Harbor. This is how we store our images. Um, there have been efforts in the, uh, in the CNCF to standardize what a container registry will do from a protocol level perspective. Uh, and so uh, a Docker distribution version two, which is the, the, the registry where the images are actually stored, is sort of the de facto standard and um, and Docker's made it clear that their intention is for, for projects like Harbor to add all of the, the, the features on top of it that are necessary to, to make a, a registry powerful and flexible. Uh, so we use that and we leverage that as, uh, as the core uh, of what Harbor is doing. Uh, the green box is our persistence. Uh, and I'd say the, the, you know, the, the meat and potatoes for Harbor is, is the blue boxes, right? So job service and admin service are asynchronous things that happen in the background and take care of background tasks. While the core service is really where the the logic and, 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 and the heart of Harbor is in terms of doing authentication, answering API calls, providing a UI for the users, intercepting uh, pushes and pulls based on vulnerability data, uh, providing our back, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then there's Claire, the vulnerability scanning. And I'll dive into all of these in a moment. So very briefly, from open source perspective, we have lots of stars. Um, uh, it's obviously not the best metric to measure a po uh, uh, an open source uh, project's popularity, but it, you know, it gives you some general idea of how many folks are at least paying attention. Uh, we have a number of contributors, uh, a lot of downloads. We have lots of forks, users, and so on and so forth. Uh, and in terms of publicly referenceable users, you know, we have quite a number uh, on this slide and, and some more as well that, that we are working to um, working with to see if, if they would be willing to, to be referenceable as well. But a lot of companies that are relying on this, and we'll be talking specifically about Kai Cloud uh, in the upper right-hand corner uh, shortly. All right, so uh, moving on to consistency here. This is sort of the important uh, piece when it comes to replication and sort of what kind of a pro what is the use case for, for what we're trying to do here, uh, particularly around replication. So here, here's the problem. You create a container today. You're a developer. You create a container, right? And you have this Docker file that uh, deterministically will go and build a container following a certain uh, uh, list of steps. So the steps are listed in, in the green box, right? So I'm going to use the Ubuntu image. I'm going to run a specific command to install Python. And then I'm going to throw my app.jar, right, a Java, file, a Java app uh, in a specific directory. And that's all great, fine, and dandy, right? But the issue here is that if you run that command today and then you run it again next week, uh, I would be willing to bet that the image, uh, the container image has changed, that the innards of that tarball have changed. And the reasons are many. Number one, Ubuntu has probably gone and updated their base image, and we're doing it from Ubuntu. Right? Number two, the, per the version of Python may or may not have changed between today and next week. Right? And there's no way to guarantee that using at least Ubuntu's package management system. Uh, and the third step is probably pretty safe unless you've gone and changed your, your application. But number one and two pose a big problem. Right? And this is sort of the issue that um, – what you would call today a DevOps individual, um, you know, five years ago would have had to figure out how to do it on their own. Right? So you have to maybe clone VMs or whatever it is. In this particular case, again, we use this, this concept of a container, right? And we package everything and we 
would put it on our registry. And you know that the image that lives on that registry between today and next week has not changed, right? Unless you've manually made a change to that. So that this is this is the core and the heart of why uh, development teams uh, like the idea of containers, right? It really solves a lot of these really fundamental and difficult to solve issues uh, easily. So image replication is one way that we can take these images and make sure that they're consistent from beginning to end, right? And here, th this is sort of a high-level slide. I'll go into detail in just one second on the next slide. But you can see here that we have images, right? We have registry A and registry B. One is blue, one is red. And we do an in initial replication, right? So you may have, I don't know, a dozen images living on the left and, and zero on the right. And you can make it so that uh, registry A will push images to B. And then we'll do a difference. So every time there's a, a new image on the left, it'll push it to the right. And you're wondering, well, why would I do that? And, and the reality is that there's really a, this, this staging pipeline. And this is not something that we made up. This is actually something that our customers, uh, several of our, our major hardware customers, or users rather, have, um, have uh, developed in-house, all on their own, without us prompting them, uh, and leveraged and then shared with us later. So this is a pretty common scenario here where you have a couple of different registries used for different reasons. Perhaps they have different R back in them, right? One is, is very loosey-goosey with developers. Another may be really, really stringently controlled because it's a production registry. But you want to make sure that the images that your CI pipeline or your developers uh, push into that dev registry are identical to the ones that are running in the production registry. Right? Because again, if I'm a user and I push something to dev, it works great. And then I'm confident that things work and I, I go and I start making some changes in Docker on my laptop and then I go do a push and something has changed and it lands on prod, who knows? Maybe something will break because a Python library changed or uh, or somebody tweaks some, some, some library on the operating system level, for example. So we use the image replication system inside of Harbor to ensure image consistency from the beginning to the end. Okay? The other reason that we use this replication uh, to ensure consistency is that you can do sort of this global replication setup right, in that you have registries in different data centers, different regions that on, on clouds, let's say, and you want to make sure that the images that you, your, your developer in, see, on the East Coast is pushing will, will appear exactly the same way in Australia, for example. Uh, so this is another thing that we have a couple of users, large users of Harbor uh, uh, leveraging. It's this replication feature to have geo, uh, a geo replication all, all in, different, um, in different regions. Let's dive in and talk about security here for a second. Um, access control, this is sort of straightforward, right? For, for those of you who run any sort of an infrastructure, uh, you know, once you get past two or three users, you really need to think about who has access to what. Um, and it's not because you don't trust somebody, but you really don't want a, an accidental push overriding an image uh, in a production environment unless that user is, is very seasoned. And we all make mistakes. But it, again, sort of, sort of the, the basic premise of RBAC and, um, and, uh, and, and uh, the, the concept of least privilege. Uh, so we, we tie into LDAP, uh, AD. Um, we have different levels of, of write and read, and I'll show you those in, in, the, uh, in the live demo here in just a moment. This shows graphically exactly what I was just talking about. We have a project. We have guests, developers, and admins. Admins are folks, obviously, with unfettered rights inside of, um, uh, inside of Harbor. Developers can do Docker pushes and pulls, while guests are only allowed to do uh, pulls images. And I can also show you this in the UI in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, security considerations, number one, I'll start with the bottom one. That's just it's the vulnerability scanning is, again, uh, one of our top two most popular features. Uh, this allows you to just see at a high level in the UI, and again, I'll show you in the demo, you know, what does this image look like from a vulnerability perspective? Uh, and I'll dive into the specifics of the vulnerability scanning in a moment, uh, but, but it's, it's one of our, our, our important features from a security consideration. It uh, is also integrated tightly with Harbor in that you can sign an image, and it'll show up in the UI as signed if you've done so. And it allows you to ensure that an image that's in the registry has been signed and, and not changed in any way, shape, or form. So this provides a, a pretty high level of security. And this is using, excuse me, Docker's notary project. So this is not something that we built in-house, but we've tightly integrated it into Harbor. Specific to the notary service, the way that this works is uh, a user will do a Docker push on a specific tag, right? So they'll push an image up to the registry, uh, and then they'll sign the tags in manifest uh, and, and send it to notary, again, the open source project owned by the CNCF. 
On the other side, right, so let's say there's a server that wants to pull this and make sure, uh, I'm sorry, a user that's, that's pulling an image from a server and they want to make sure that uh, the image is signed, they'll do uh, the, the reverse. They'll get the, the, the signature first and then they'll do the Docker pull on that, uh, on that digest. And this ensures, again, that the image from beginning to end has not been changed in any way after it is signed. Vulnerability scanning. Um, there's a couple of neat things that come out of this. Number one, again, it's in the UI. It's very easy to look at and see, hey, our prod image has really a number of high, um, high uh, urgency CVEs that we need to address, even though it's been running in production for a few days, for example. Uh, you can actually set a threshold whereby images cannot be pulled if they meet a specific threshold, a specific um, a number of high vulnerabilities, for example. Okay. Uh, we use static analysis. This is actually Claire. This is a project that was started by CoreOS. Um, the way that Claire works is that it's going to pull CVE data from multiple vendors, right? Alpine, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Debian, et cetera. It grabs those, uh, that CVE database from those vendors on a regular basis, and then you can do a scan or it can scan uh, periodically based on your configuration. And it'll go through all the images that are in the database and, and scan them for you and then update the UI as necessary. This is what it looks like. I'm going to skip over this pretty quickly because I'll show you on the UI. But you have a bar here that shows you the vulnerability uh, output. You also see that the image has been scanned. When you roll over it, you can see uh, the number of, of known vulnerabilities that are uh, identified with that specific image. Image distribution. Um, you know, if you think about large organizations using um, a container registry, you can pretty quickly see that there's, there's probably an issue with a thousand developers or a thousand Kubernetes nodes pulling the same image at exactly the same time, or even roughly at the same time, right? IO is going to become a problem, and so is your network. All right, so scaling out a registry becomes something that you need to think about. And again, this goes back to our replication feature, where you can have sort of this core harbor node that replicates images down to sort of the fleet of harbor nodes that can then be leveraged by Docker, uh, a Docker clients, whether it's a, a kubelet, or individual developers. All right. And this is, like, again, a scale-out um, architecture that our users figured out how to do all in and of themselves, and, and they then shared that with us. And uh, there's some pretty good information about how to do something like this uh, on our GitHub Wiki, if you're interested. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about high availability, uh, just because it's, it's actually a pretty complex topic. Um, uh, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. So our Wiki talks about this in detail. Uh, if, if you really need to do an HA scenario. Uh, but um, it's something that we're continuing to refactor on. We're trying to make it easier and easier. Every release gets a little bit better when it comes to high availability. Certainly something that you can do today, uh, but it's, it's a little bit manual. There are definitely some steps that you need to take on your own if you want to do this. Uh, and um, again, go, go check out our wiki on, on GitHub. Uh, it talks about all the different steps that are needed. And if you have any systems experience, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get it up and running in, in somewhat short order. Uh, so I'll talk very quickly about the case study. So Kai Cloud is a, a CAS, a container as a service. This is, I suppose, very similar, uh, at least from, from you know, their, their overarching goal to, to VKE, which is our, our new um, uh, Kubernetes uh, offering, um, our Kubernetes CAS offering. And the reason that we're mentioning this is that, that they uh, have tightly integrated Harbor. So they, they have their own UI. Right? And, and Harbor is 100% API driven. If, if you're comfortable with an API, you can do you know, all sorts of nifty and neat things without even touching the UI of Harbor. And that's exactly what this organization did. So Kai Cloud, it's a CAS. It was a startup in, in China, very, very popular. And when a user logs in, not only do they see their list of images and uh, – I'm sorry, their list of running uh, Kubernetes clusters, but they have the ability to, to store their images in a private container registry, and that is uh, Harbor, and it's actually running on top of Kubernetes. Uh, so they've tightly integrated in that. Everything is in the UI. Uh, unfortunately, this is a tiny picture just because it's PowerPoint. Um, uh, we have a larger picture on our wiki on GitHub. And um, uh, everything is a single pane of glass. It looks like one smooth product uh, when a user logs in. While under the hood, they're using both Kubernetes and Harbor, and they tightly integrated it. So it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting case study. Uh, happy to discuss it a little bit more offline with you if you'd like. Ping me on GitHub. Um, and it really shows that Harbor as a core component is, is valuable. It's obviously something that we've done with PKS uh, and Vic and other organizations have done with their products as well. So very briefly, I'll talk about the roadmap and then we'll get on to the demo. 
Um, I'm not going to read this out to everybody. Um, I, I, uh, as I mentioned, everything is public on GitHub. We, we are very open about what it is that we're trying to do with the project moving forward. Um, you know, today we have, um, we're going to, to be releasing 1.6 in, in the future, 1.7 afterwards, and 1.8. Uh, we release roughly every quarter. Uh, we're looking at doing all sorts of things from uh, image proxying, uh, doing monitoring, again, with things like Prometheus and other platforms as well, uh, pull-based replication so that images that are being commonly pulled uh, can, be, can be snatched from another harbor node to sort of a local harbor node. Uh, life cycle management, such as upgrading and rollbacks, is something that we're always looking to improve. Uh, for 1.8, we're looking at uh, scanning improvements and, and all sorts of different things, like potentially adding another multi-tenancy layer. Um, again, it's an open source project. If you have you know, coding skills and, and this is something that's of interest to you, you kind of like the, the demarcation between development and infrastructure, uh, you know, join us. We're very friendly. Uh, the crew loves uh, working with new users or new developers who are trying to, to get their feet wet. Uh, so I'll pause here just so I can take a gulp of water. And, and Jonas, do we have any questions, anything that I need to address? Yes, we actually do have a, a few really, really good questions here. Okay. Um, so I'll start with the, uh, the first one here from uh, Deepak Biswas. Is there an easy way to clean up images using the Harbor UI? Uh, you, okay, so there's, that's, a, that's a great question. You can delete images, obviously. Um, there is a garbage mm -hmm. collection process that happens in the background. And uh, this is something that you today have to currently kick off in the UI, and we are somewhat close to making it easier. I'm sorry, let me back up. It's, this is something you manually have to kick off today using the COI, right? Uh, and this is something that we're uh, improving. Uh, the next release should actually have this offline garbage collection mode where the registry will, um, where you don't have to take down the registry when you're doing a garbage collection. Uh, and it'll be available via the UI as well. So every release, will, this will get a little bit easier. If you're talking about just deleting images, you can definitely do it today. If you're talking about garbage collection, it's something that's coming uh, hopefully around the corner. Okay, great. Um, from uh, Deepak here as well, uh, so is it possible to have um, read replicas, like region-based mirrors, if I understand the question correctly, where we only want to replicate the, Im uh, the image but avoid push operations in the mirrors. So um, you would have a central repository push out to uh, edge um, mm -hmm. repositories, essentially, and have those edge repositories only be read-only. Would that work? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So the easy way to do this today is you – so our back is not replicated. Image replication is truly – replicating images only. So uh, the way that I've seen this done before is that your uh, edge harbors, I, I like that term, your edge harbors would have a very strict RBAC policy. So you could have, a, I don't know, a general user that would have only pull ability. Uh, and if you wanted to push, it would have to go through sort of that central or master harbor node. Um, but as things progress, uh, perhaps this is something that would not require RBAC in that we are, again, adding a, um, a read-only mode to the registry, which should land in the next release or two uh, that would address this in perhaps a more stringent manner. Great. Uh, question here from uh, Nisha Kumar. Um, can users pick what images they want to replicate? Yes, uh, you can. So we're, so right, I'll show you in the UI here in just a moment. You can do that. Um, the other thing is that we have label support that was added in one, uh, one five and uh, we are going to also allow replication based on labels here uh, shortly. I think that'll land in one seven. So, um, yes, I'll show you how you can pick the exact images in, uh, in the UI here momentarily. Great. Uh, let's see, we've got two more questions here. Uh, is there a plan to integrate with any remote registries to have one point of access for multiple registries? Uh, say yes. you would have Docker Hub and Artifactory using Harbor as a proxy. Yes, yes. yes. So, um, a great question, Alicia. Um, so let me see where I put this on the list here. Uh, so feature, in the future, 1.7, it says image proxying. That's exactly what we would do. And this is particularly useful for organizations that have, for example, very tight firewall rules uh, where I, I suppose a, a, a security operations group would allow Harbor to do the proxying on their behalf, but they wouldn't allow uh, individual users to do a Docker pull on on. Docker Hub. So the goal here for the future version, and um, I encourage you to submit a, a PR, not, not you, Alicia, but anybody, um, 
the, the idea behind this feature is I would do a Docker pull. If it doesn't live locally on my harbor, it would go and pull that image from a select list of external registries such as Docker Hub, and it would then cache it locally. And you know, more advanced features would be uh, the ability for caches to be refreshed and so on and so forth. So it's something that we're looking at, and it's, it's hopefully coming around the corner. I've, I've certainly heard this request a couple of different times, and it's, it's certainly reasonable. So it, it's, on our, it's on our radar for sure. Great. Um, I've got a question here from Jeff Krupinski. Uh, I think it might be a, a little more elaborate question here. So can you explain how Harbor can be used with Vic on the edge and PKS at the corporate data center? Um, yeah, I probably need a little bit more information on on uh, on sort of the the idea behind this. I'm I'm trying to think about how to give a concise, clear answer here. Um, so 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 Vic Harbor. So let me let me back up. Vic Harbor has a, a smaller subset of features than than the open source release and the PKS version. Um, I kind of see why you would want to do that. Maybe to have Vic as sort of an edge uh, container platform perhaps, uh, but there's no mechanism that, well, I suppose it could be replication between the PKS Harbor and the Vic Harbor, but I, I don't know that I can answer that without perhaps a little bit more detail. So maybe Jeff, you can you can ping me on, on GitHub and I'm, I'm very happy to sort of understand your use case and chat with you th through the process. Great, uh, we've got uh, another question here just popped up from uh, James uh, Wur. Ruer Flane, I, I I apologize if I butchered your your last name there. Uh, can you put any rules or policies on what kind of Docker images that you want to have available, like a filter or something like that? Um, I, I would imagine that would be through the the R back then maybe depending yeah, on yeah. what user you are. Oh yeah. Yes, certainly. So our back would definitely be one way to do this. When you say kind, I mean, there's a couple of different things that could mean, you know, are we talking about a Linux uh, Red Hat container versus, I don't know, a, a Alpine container? Um, I guess that's the only thing that I can think of in terms of kind. Uh, James, please feel free to clarify while, while I answer here. Uh, but if that's the case, then um, no today, but we can do, well, actually, that's not true. We could do it today, but it's sort of a uh, a, a multi-step process in that you would put different kinds of containers into different projects uh, and then users would be granted access to those projects um, based using RBAC. Uh, alternatively, um, we can't do this today, but you know, labels could probably play a part in this in the future and that um, you could tag images using labels and we don't have this functionality today, although it's certainly something that I, I think would, would be reasonable to add, and that is um, applying R back to lab based on labels. Okay, great. Uh, one final question here from uh, Kenneth Paul. Will slides be available later? Will what now? Will the slides be available later? Oh, um, sure. I believe I we can share on... them out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can put them on GitHub if, if we don't have another more formal mechanism to um, to share it. But yeah, we'll we'll put the slides out and I'll I'll find a way to do it. And let's just say that worst case scenario, we'll we'll tweet about it uh, from our CNA handle if that's okay, James. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, okay. So that's it for the the questions that we have right now. Uh, did you want to go into the UI and show something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Can you see the uh, login site here, John? Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. So I have two um, Harbor nodes here. Uh, Harbor, uh, you'll see here on the, the URL bar, Harbor 1 and Harbor 2. Um, the reason I have two is because I, I wanted to show how replication works here. But let, let me just give a sort of a cursory uh, a walk through here on, on Harbor. So uh, search Harbor, obviously that you, know, you can search for, for images in this case. we have. Uh, English and Chinese are, are primarily the ones that are that maintain the most. Our, a big chunk of our development team is in China. Uh, this is our user. You can have, you know, obviously modify the user's profile as necessary. Uh, you can change passwords and so on. All right, so sort of the basic stuff on the bar. Uh, we have our, our information here about the number of, of projects and repos and how much storage we're using here. Uh, note that storage in Harbor is, is 
really one of two two things. It's either local storage to the the, the node that's actually running the bits, uh, or you can also back up. Uh, you can have a uh, sort of a back end uh, storage using S3 compatible. So you know, TCS, uh, S3, and whatever Azure is uh, equivalent to here as well. Okay. Uh, so you can create a new project. Again, we, we can sort of, uh, to the question about selecting, uh, putting our background specific types of images, certainly we can come here and say, you know, a new project and call it CentOS images, for example. And I don't know, we can make it public if you want. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we can go and start putting images here. So for those of you who have obviously used Docker, um, uh, you would, you would, tag a specific image and it tells you exactly how to put this image where, where you want it, right? You would, you would tag it and then you would do a push and it would show up on this list here. Uh, now that we're inside of a project, you can actually specify your members, right? So I can create a new member here. Uh, I don't have any other users. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment, but you can say, hey, I only want um, uh, user test to have guest access as an example. And I'll show you how to add users in a moment. Uh, replication is, is, again, one of our more popular features, and I'll dive into that in just a moment here on the sidebar. Labels, right, we can create labels as well. Uh, logs, everything that happens in the system has an audit log. So if you push an image or you pull an image, you're going to see who's doing that, when they did it, and what the result was. Okay, so in this particular case, we have create. Uh, and then configuration specific to this project, right, you can make it public, you can enable the content trust, which is notary, which is finding images. Um, you can prevent images, uh, vulnerable images from running here. And let's say anything that has a medium of vulnerability, uh, don't let it get pulled. Right? If somebody does a Docker pull, it'll, it'll fail. Uh, and then finally, you can scan the images every time you push them. Right? Logs, this is system-wide logs. You can see here that I, I threw a bunch of images here at a, a week or, or two ago when I was uh, setting up this demo environment. And there's you know, lots and lots of images that I put here so that you can see I logged in as an admin. Right? I have a repository name, I have a tag, and I did a push. So going into the admin section of the system here, uh, I can create a new user. Let's call them test, uh, test at VMware, test user, create a password, uh, read only. Okay. So I'll come in here and just we'll, we'll we'll touch this guy in a moment. But I just created a user. Um, in terms of registries here, this is actually for replication. And I'll I'll, I'll go back to user. I'm not just leaving this dangling. Just just bear with me a moment here. Registry, so for example, let's say I want to go here. I have a bunch of projects. Let's pick one that has, um, I don't know, uh, just just dev, right? Because I, I don't want to, this, this base image just has, a, I don't know, 50,000 images in it. So let's say I want to replicate dev from Harbor 1 to Harbor 2. All right? So my two tabs here. So I'll go into registries. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an endpoint. I'm going to call it Harbor uh, 2, um, Harbor 2, uh, go Harbor, uh, login as admin. Let's test my connection. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go to replication here and create a new rule. I call this uh, dev replication, uh, replicate the dev project. I do here uh, the project, the, my source project is called dev. You saw that it actually uh, half completed it for me here when I typed a few letters. Source image filter. This is actually um, uh, what Nisha was asking about where I can select, uh, I don't know, a specific. Um, tag for an image that I wanted so you can filter, filter out that way. And in the future, we're going to add label here so that, uh, for example, if you have prod images and you want only those images to be replicated, you'll be able to select by label. So that's something that's in progress right now. Uh, endpoint, we're going to select the endpoint that we just created. And trigger mode, I don't know, we'll just do it immediately, right? Um, and go save here. And if you come here, hopefully this will work. There you go. We see the dev. And I guess it's still replicating the image. Mm -hmm. uh, it is pushing it. So you can see it's pushing it. Just let's give it a second here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, so you see how replication works. And this is sort of the bare minimum. Obviously, you can get very creative here with replicating images. You saw the slide with the sort of the global replication. Um, so so uh, this is definitely a feature that our, our users are leveraging in, in pretty creative ways. Uh, so I'll get back to the user, haven't forgotten. In the meantime, you can do several off mode. Again, you can do LDAP here if you have an active directory and open LDAP server, whatever it may be. Project creation is, is really, um, uh, this is up to you and your organization. Some organizations make it you know, wide open willy-nilly and anybody can create a project. Some only allow the admin to create projects and delegate permissions that way. Um, Self-registration is pretty nifty. 
uh, if you're done with this, when you're done with this, uh, you can go to, with this uh, webinar, you can go to demo.goharbor.io. And this is set up so that you can log in here and play to your heart's content. So in addition to the live demo, you get a live demo environment. I encourage you to use it, just sign in. It allows self-registration and, and you can start pushing images as, as you wish. Uh, email, so you can get alerts via email. Uh, system settings is, is pretty much for, for logging you out. Uh, labels, this is again something that we're, we're, we added in 1.5 and we're, we're continuing to uh, add features around this concept so you can create labels here. I don't know, let's call it webinar. We can select the color. Uh, sorry, the colors don't work. This is a small bug. Um, and webinar label. Cool. Now I can add these labels to, to my, um, uh, to my uh, images. Uh, so I'll go here real quick just to show you the member. Uh, I'm going to add a new member here. I just created the test user, I believe his name was. And I'll make him a guest. Um, and let's log out here and test. And you can see that my view is limited to only the dev uh, and then obviously the library, which is public. This is created by default in, in a Harbor installation. So dev is what I just gave this particular user access to. Okay. And the final thing I'll show here is um, the, uh, actually this one's got a lot of images. Let's go to um, old images. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're in old images Alpine. This is obviously an Alpine image. The, um, this is the latest tag. If you roll over, first of all, the image is not signed, right? I just grabbed these off of Docker Hub, wrote a script, and then pushed all these different images into, into this box to seed them, or to seed the box, rather. Uh, this particular um, image is not, or tag, tag image does not have a, uh, a vulnerability, so this is great. It'll let you pull it. Um, let me see if I can find one that has, um, uh, go in, probably has a, okay, so I don't know, one three. This is ancient. This is a really old image. I'm guessing it's back from 2014, 2015. You can see there's, there's quite a number of vulnerabilities here. It says 31 high, 13 medium, 5 low, um, and we scanned it on the 16th. Uh, so you can go in here and it oops, looks like a, um, my, my larger font here is, is messing this up. So it, here it breaks it down for you a little bit and shows you the actual CVEs that are relevant uh, uh, to this particular image. And it shows you what version um, the, the particular package has a fiction. Okay. Uh, so that's sort of a, a quick walkthrough uh, in the UI. Again, go to demo.goharbor.io. You can sign up for an account here. Um, the, the box is wiped every two days, so you can, you can push as many images as you want, and um, it, don't be worried about filling up our drive. We'll, we'll clean it up every few days automatically. Um, but I think that's a, a pretty, pretty good walkthrough here on, um, on the UI. Do we have any new questions, Jonas? Yes, we do have one new question here uh, from okay. James. What goes into the setup of Harbor? Is there an OVA that you deploy, or how do you deploy OVA and uh, deploy Harbor? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, there's two ways to do this. Uh, well, there, there's a couple ways. If you, if you have bought PKS, it's a tile, right? just like everything else that's related to Pivotal. It makes it really easy to install, and uh, you, you sort of fill out a small wizard where you give it an IP and so on, and it'll, it'll do its thing. Uh, we do have an OVA uh, for Harbor, uh, and sort of the the the, um, the most manual way, which gives you the most flexibility. By the way, it lets you um, you know get down to the nitty gritty and, and put the images on a specific file system or whatever it may be. Uh, that is done using Docker Compose, which is really really simple. It's like a three step process. You download the tarball, you extract it, you edit one config file, you just change the host name and whatnot, and then you you tell Docker Compose to stand up the entire stack. Uh, so those are sort of the three um, mechanisms to to installing Harbor. Excellent. Uh, that was the only question uh, right now. If you have any other questions, please add them to the the Q and A uh, box there. Yeah, that's that's all I had. I'm happy to stick around for you know a couple of minutes here if there are any new questions. Um, Again, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, GitHub is probably the easiest way. Um, I'm in the Harbor project quite a bit. Um, if not, just drop me an email. It's okay either way. And we will post the slides. Uh, and I encourage you to try the demo.goharbor.io. It's, um, uh, it's something relatively new. We just, we just put up a couple weeks ago. And um, 
makes it easy to try out the, the project before investing time in deploying an OVA or whatnot. Awesome. Well, I think that uh, that's wraps up the, uh, the webinar. Uh, I want to thank you so much, James, for, for presenting today. It's been a, a really interesting topic. And I want to thank everyone who's been participating as an attendee here. Uh, the questions have been, uh, have been great. Thank you so much for, for attending. And uh, I hope to see you all soon at another webinar like this. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.